I am beyond excited to finally introduce you to the first stable version of the parkour calculator. This project has been in my plans for many years and now after accumulating enough knowledge, I can finally bring it to life. In this video I will first share the story behind the creation of this program and then discuss its current capabilities and finally reveal my plans for its future. I started with Minecraft Parkour around late 2017 and I remember trying to derive in-game movement formulas back in mid-2018. However, I was quite unsuccessful at the time. Fast forward a year and thanks to Cinemal and the creation of the MCPK wikis, it became possible to create basic movement formulas that were linear and didn't require input for facing. In July 2019, I programmed the first version of the Parkour calculator using Java Editor. I was incredibly proud of my work, even though the only thing the calculator could do was calculate the player's velocity on a straight plane with sprint jumps. About a month later, I released version 2.0 and started working on a concept for further improvement. However, I realized that the project was much more complex than I initially thought, so it never materialized. Around a year later, in 2020, I created a parkour helper plugin for servers that allowed players to see how close they were to making a jump or how many blocks they missed. At the same time, I began my bachelor degree in computer science in early 2020, leaving me with less time to work on Minecraft related projects. Nearly a year later, I tried again to implement a parkour calculator, this time with support for a three-dimensional interface. However, this proved to be much more challenging than expected as JavaFX was not well suited for creating game-like first-person perspectives and there were virtually no online tutorials. I had a couple more failed attempts of creating three-dimensional interfaces in 2021, quickly lost motivation and only resumed working on the parkour calculator in 2022. This time I managed to create a three-dimensional interface that allowed block placements, although it was still quite buggy. I was able to work with this and implement the more detailed movement formulas from the MCPK wiki, focusing on enabling the player to move in all three dimensional directions and allowing user inputs for simulating movement, just like in MPK macros. Block collisions were not yet implemented. A significant challenge were the numerous bugs that occurred when the user moved around the world, tried to place blocks or attempted to move the path, which led to me losing interest again. But in early 2023, I returned to the project and finally brought it to a stable first alpha release. All right, let's dive into the program and take a closer look at its functionalities. First, let's talk about the user interface. At the top, you'll find a menu with file and help. On the left side, you can create inputs to be simulated and on the right side, you'll find an information area, block, player and screen settings. At the bottom, there's a selection of various blocks while the center of the screen displays the simulation. With file, you can import world structures, and inputs directly from MPK. You can also save these world structures and inputs again and export the inputs back into MPK macros. The help button allows to reset the program to its default settings, including resetting the blocks, the players and the inputs. The inputs similar to MPK macros allow you to create simulations on the screen. You can select different ticks by left clicking the checkboxes. Right clicking allows you to select multiple checkboxes at once. Below the checkboxes, you have the option to add more input ticks and the number you enter in the middle determines how many ticks can be added. The duplication button duplicates the last tick listed. WASD corresponds to the known WASD inputs. J stands for jump, P for sprint and N for sneak and F for facing. As you can see, the display on the right side updates automatically when adding new ticks or placements of the blocks, showing the start position, the nth tick and the last tick position. You can click on the start position on the screen and move the path around with live updates and informations on the right side. Double clicking on a tick will highlight it in red and display the values for the nth tick coordinate, which is useful for checking how close a player lands or how narrowly they can dodge a block. Now let's explore the building mechanics in the calculator. Open the block settings on the right side. Users can place blocks and a block preview is shown where the block will be placed. Users can disable this block preview in the screen settings. If you want to place blocks like paints, fences or cobble walls and want to create a connection to another block simultaneously, you must select it in the block settings. A helpful feature is the hover over on the block side, which indicates the blocks facing under general screen information block facing. For blocks containing tiers like cakes, cocoa beans or snow, you can select tiers underneath. You can also set a custom color but you must enable it first. Disabling it reverts it 
to the default colors. The player settings allow for precise movement of the player and are currently the only way how the user can change the Y value of the player. Press the get values button to obtain the player's current position and then live set the XYZ position and XYZ velocity for the player's starting position. Next to the get values, there's a copy to clipboard button that provides a teleport command for Minecraft. If you want to configure the simulation, camera or mouse movement speed or change the precision of the coordinates, this can be done through a config file. As of now, this file is not very accessible. To change it, right click on your .jar, open it as archive and find the options.properties file. There you can change values as you wish. Restart the .jar afterwards. All right, let's move on to the last part of the video, the future of the parkour calculator. Currently, it serves as the foundation for a one-to-one -one simulation between Minecraft and the calculator. The calculator is significantly more efficient than Minecraft's calculation, while also providing visual assistance for strategizing. My goal is to add more features that can assist in finding strategies within Minecraft. These include angle optimizations from Wolfram Alpha, as well as custom pathfinding AI and other constraint calculations. Additionally, the calculator is currently designed for Minecraft version 1.8.9. I plan to change this and support versions 1.12, 1.16.5 and the latest version. If you'd like to contribute to the project, you can find the open source GitHub repository via the link in the description. If you have any ideas but don't know how to code, feel free to suggest them in my Discord server, also linked in the description. That wraps up our introduction to the Paco Calculator. I hope you're as excited about its potential as I am. Be sure to stay tuned for future updates and improvements. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content like this. See you in the next video.